we are going to take a break here on First Look Asia, but when we return... What do you think about that type of music? Mozart or Metallica? Or both? What is the future for classical music in Asia? We'll speak to two experts coming up next. Good morning, welcome back to First Look Asia. Now this is a competition that's attracted some of the brightest young violinists. It's called the inaugural Singapore International Violin Competition. And they're battling it out for the top prize of 50,000 US dollars. That's about uh, 66,000 Singapore dollars and also the chance to perform with renowned orchestras. It is hosted by the Yong Shu Cho Conservatory of Music, and joining us this morning in the studio is Richard Lin, one of the three finalists who will vie for the top prize tomorrow night, and we have Professor Bernard Lansky as well, director of the conservatory. Thank you both for coming in this morning. Uh, Professor, let's talk about this competition. So sure. What is this about? Well, over the last um, 20, 30 years, the there's been a real growth in classical music in Asia, and particularly in Singapore, Southeast Asia. So this was a, an opportunity to celebrate what's been happening. And one way to celebrate and to develop an area is obviously to bring the best in the world so that people can see so, them. So the competition is, is not just for Singaporeans, it is well, Absolutely, no, it's from all over the world. So how do you select uh, Well, we do a worldwide advertisement for the possibility of the competition, and we had 150 applicants from everywhere. And so, the first stage was actually listening to 150 tapes, uh, blind, um, and just deciding who the jury thought were the, the best 35. So the best 35 were then brought to Singapore. Okay, and so, so what, from what? 35, now it's down to the last three. Now we're down to Richard. the last three, including Richard. Richard is one exactly. of them. Congratulations, by the way. Tell us a bit about your journey. Uh, well, it's, it's been amazing. Um, this is actually the, the second time I, I'm in Singapore. The last time was like 13, 14 years ago. So like, it's, it's a brand new experience for me this time in Singapore. Yeah, and I, I honestly, since the, the, the first round, 35 of the contestants, they're all very, very good musicians. Um, and I feel really lucky that I, I'm in the last three. I don't think it's just all about luck, though. I, I think you need to have a certain amount of talent and discipline as well. Uh, who would you say is your biggest influence then? Um, I would say, uh, I think it's my father. Yeah, because... Is your father a musician too? He's not. Yeah, he's that, not. That, that's the interesting point, because uh, he really likes music, and uh, he collects uh, LPs, CDs since he was a teenager. And uh, yeah, I started violin when I was four. Um, the reason was because um, my grandma gave me a toy violin. A toy violin? And, yeah, and as, started as a birthday okay. present. And, and then I started violin, to play violin in the kindergarten, like a group. Um, yeah, and then and ever since then, my father, when I was, whenever I was practicing, my father was always with me. And so family did, support yeah. has been very important. Yes. Yeah. Look, Bernard, the, the violin is not an easy instrument to master. It can Absolutely. be challenging for some people. Uh, is it still a very popular instrument today in Asia? Very popular, and, and particularly in Singapore. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, the, the standard of very young players is really incredible here. I mean, it does require discipline. It does require um, uh, family support. I mean, regular practice. But actually, the interesting thing is if those first couple of years are successful, uh, then of course you can get access to some really great music and so the, the, after you get past sort of finding intonation, how to play in tune, how to make a nice sound and so on, then it becomes, once you've mastered that discipline, it just becomes I think more and more um, engaging. So, uh, okay, let's talk about uh, classical music here in Asia. Is, is there popular demand for such a music in Asia these Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, one of the things with the competition is there's been many rounds. So we've had about um, six, seven days worth of performances. Mm -hmm. And right from the beginning, we've had great audiences. And not, I mean, elsewhere in the world, your audiences may come from a certain age group, for example. Here, it's across the whole range. I mean, even last night, I was sitting in front of, I was sitting behind a little girl who must have been six or seven, and she, been there the previous evening and she she was listening the whole time and really engaged with it. So I think there's a real enthusiasm for the music. Okay, but like everything else, any, anything classic, 
uh, remains classic, but is there uh, any demand for modernizing violin music? Because when, when we talk about violin music, suddenly we talk about classical. So the only thing I recall when you talk about maybe uh, classical music that's a bit more modern is uh, Vuna Sunway, and that was ages ago. Yes, yeah, sure. she's now skiing. So. She's now <laughs> skiing. So, so Richard, what's, what's your style? Are you more uh, traditional classical or are you more partial to like modern classical? Well, the repertoire we play is mainly classical, but for for example, in this competition, in the semifinal, we have to play a piece that's so newly composed by a Singaporean composition, a uh, composer. Sorry, yeah. So it's kind of a modern music, contemporary classical. Okay. I, I but to be able to reach out to a wider audience, is there you think a need to expand your repertoire to include yes, of course, music? Played in a violin, for example. Yeah, like uh, in Taiwan, I, I sometimes include um, like traditional folk songs arrangement, and also sometimes pop music, Ch Chinese pop music arrangement. And does this get your audience dancing and moving around on this theme? One of the one of the things that's quite interesting. If you look at a lot of pop groups and so on, they, they all often have backing instruments and so on, and you'll find strings are there all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I I knew, for example, I used to play with, in fact, the classical violinist who was also behind the screen when Gorillaz were first set up, the band. And of course, in that, with that ensemble, with that, with that band, you didn't see any of the musicians, but there were a lot of classical players there. And so it is a, it's a mix, but the violin goes back now for 400 years. So the, the next 10 years, I, of course, only produce a certain proportion of the material that you've got. It's a bit like art. I mean, you've got Mona Lisa, you've got Picasso, you've got contemporary art. It's a bit the same with. But to go mainstream, is there a need, perhaps, to to combine the two, classical and modern? So, I think there's a real range of tastes, and uh, it's it's always good to be contemporary to make sure it fits. But um, I think there's one of the things that sort of speaks for itself is the audiences for the competition. I mean, we've had a final that was sold out, we'll have a grand final on Wednesday where the Esplanade will be sold out. So there's an interest that, I mean, maybe it's not in the millions, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, hits on YouTube or something, but it's, it'll be in classical music is often in the hundred thousands, for example. So Richard, uh, are you prepared? Are you ready? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to be ready <laughs> because for this competition we have we have to prepare a lot of repertoire. Like um, maybe we're talking about two, three hours of pieces. So each round we play differently, okay. and the next round we all play a romantic concerto. Well, so I think a lot of young people out there are going to be looking to you as an inspiration. You know, so what would you give uh, as advice to someone who's a young aspiring violinist? I would say. Um, of course, practice hard, study hard, but the most important thing is you have to be yourself. Like, because uh, there are so many great musicians out, out there. And you have to enjoy what you do, right? Yes. That's yep. the key. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. thank you very much uh, for right. sharing your thoughts. Pleasure speaking with you guys. Professor Lansby and Richard uh, Lin, of course, joining us here in the studio. Richard uh, is in the finals, mm -hmm. last three standing. And if you want to catch some uh, world-class violinists in action, tickets are still available at Cystic. All the details are right there on your screen. And that's it. We've come.